Alrighty. Hello, Devin. Hi. Hello. We've just met this right, like right this moment. We, we have been walking around. <laughs> we have been walking around Middlesbrough for the past hour or so, or over an hour, and now we've met up in a. We're now in a park. Uh, how are you doing today? How's your day? Yes, been? everything's been fine. My the vast majority, of the, other than other than my whole issue with the trains. Yeah. Uh, the majority of my day, you've seen it. Seems to be alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's been fine. It's not been raining. No. So, uh, this this is kind of strange. It is a bit strange because it's sort of like it's got that, like, that false element. Because we've just been like chatting regularly and then we're like, we should record. So now we have. But this is the first live episode. To be fair, we attempted to record earlier on in a cafe, but it was really noisy. We don't have any good recording equipment, it's just a phone. Yeah. But we are. Uh, it is a bit strange. Yeah. Usually, so, I have usually I have some kind of thing on my computer screen where I know roughly what I'm going to say. Yeah. So now it's probably going to be even worse. Yeah. My performance, at least. Maybe, but once we get the topic going, okay, we'll talk. It'll just roll off. Can be wanting to talk about things. Was it the game collectibles? Collectibles. Things that are related to video games that you collect. Let's say either in the video game, or onto your computer, or in the real world. Yeah. I have, I have very mixed feelings about this. Right. What about you? See, well you said mixed feelings. So, I thought you, I thought you were talking specifically about like, um, like outside items. Yeah. That you would, uh, that, that you would, uh, like, like soundtracks and... Yeah, yeah, that's, little, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about. Right. There is another component. Uh, we've spoken about it before. I think it's like it ties into the microtransactions thing. So maybe we can get this, this part. Uh, having played a lot of Counter Strike since about 2012, to be fair, I've all but stopped now. I've gotten bored of it, I suppose. But a lot of people boot up that game to play for half an hour. It's going to be loud. Okay, there's a plane over, 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 overhead. Well, this is the in, this is the authentic experience. This is the genuine experience. It's a private jet. It's a wee little plane. Anyway, yeah. uh, there are people who boot up Counter Strike to play a few rounds just long enough so that they can get a drop. Now these ah. drops are skins and cases. Skins, of course, you can get for free. As in, the, the Counter Strike now drops these skins, and you can have them to your collection. But they're usually really terrible. But you can have a case, and you can buy a key for two pounds to unlock that case. And so these uh, these types of players, they would buy pay the two pounds to unlock the case, get a bit of their gambling fix, and that would be their whole experience within the game. So they play the game just to unlock something to have in their digital collection on the Steam store, on their Steam profile, let's say, or in-game. They can inspect it in-game. But I think a lot of people don't actually even use the item in the game. First and foremost, the item has absolutely zero impact on how the game is played, which can be seen as a positive and a negative thing, I suppose. Yeah. There's nothing worse than somebody paying money to be better at the game artificially. Yeah. Or paying, paying to not play the game, because that's another funny, funny yeah. aspect. But that's an example of a collectible. Like you go into the game to collect all this, all these digital items, these skins. Let's let's call them. And that's something that I'm not particularly fond of. What about you? Or do you have any experience with it at all? I always I always find with like skins is I feel like the value the value. So it sounds to me like what you're saying is, and this is kind of kind of a bit how I feel. But I suppose I mean I don't know. It depends. There's variants on it, but it's like the value isn't what the skin is, it's just the value is having the skin because it's something to get. Is yeah. that what you're thinking? Partly. I think there is also value, oh, it's the whole gambling aspect. You don't know what you're going to get. Maybe yeah. you're going to get something that's worth £100, maybe you're going to get something that's worth 3p. Yeah. And it's just like if you go to a casino, you might think you strike big, but the likelihood is you're not. Yeah. But this is coming from somebody who opened a case in Counter-Strike. 
and it was an item worth three hundred pounds. I sold it, yeah. and then I stopped gambling. Yeah, I cheat. I, I suppose I cheated the system to an extent. Yeah, yeah because you meant to get addicted. You meant to get that, addicted. That, that you, meant, you meant to think three hundred pounds. Next time I'll get one for a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. With that three hundred pounds, it was steam. I sold it for in in the steam marketplace. Uh, for Steam credit, and I exchanged it for games that I bought for myself and for friends. So, yeah, I didn't hurt Valve yeah. in the end. They still earn money. Yeah, I think because I've not because so, so my my primary example with like online multiplayer now, as you know, is Magic the Gathering Arena. So I play that, and what they and so now and so they have like uh, like cosmetics. So you can get like different avatars and card sleeves and all that. And I just, I mean, I got one avatar, um, but like the card sleeves, I just don't care for them. I don't, I don't like them at all. Mm. They've also got uh, alt card arts, where basically it's just it's the same thing, but they they extend the artwork out and they change the color a bit. And I think I think they look gross. Okay. So I'm just like, if ever I get them, I'm just turn them off. Cause I want everything to be like, I like everything to be like consistent and uniform. But, you know, you, you do get some people who, like, they'll build a deck and they'll make sure that every single card mm -hmm. has, a, is like that card art style, like, just because it's special or something. And I just, I just find it gross. Just, like, visually, I just find it, I just, I just don't like how they look. What if they looked good? What if there was an experience, what if there was some kind of cosmetic, the most expensive one, perhaps, that would transform the look of the whole game? and your deck and all the cards, everything would be uniform, but in a different style, that was very appealing. Would you dive in? See, if we th think, so the best way for me to think about it is to think this back to front. So like, if I imagine that the ones that are the extra styles are the default ones, and the actual default ones are the extra ones, um, it, it would be more a case of like, I'll just have to settle for the worst ones because at least they're uniform that way. Yeah. If you get what I mean. But I just, but yeah, I just like with with like cosmetics and stuff. I just think, like if it's if it's something to collect to say like, if it's to like at your percentage completion, then then like fair enough. That's something that's something I can do because that's like I don't know that feels like a part of the game. But I guess it varies. One thing that comes to mind now, and that is, I don't think that's going to help. Uh, no. <laughs> and that is, uh, uh, what is it called? Mini clip pull. Right. Mini clip pull on the phone. This is something I used to play oh. on the screen. Yes. And yes. I had it on my phone for a while until the yeah. microtransactions got too, a bit too obscene. Because that's a game where you can buy. You can spend eighty pounds on the best pool queue uh -huh. that helps you win, which is idiotic. Yeah. And then the then the pool queue runs out of energy. Can you imagine? <laughs> and you have to charge up your pool queue. Oh, Hustle Kings. Anyway, sorry. I was going to say uh, there's a game called Hustle Kings, which uh -huh. is like a pool game. Okay. And th there's microtransactions in that, which is chalk. So you can you can. <laughs> just for the just for the audience's sake, yeah. I have just sunk my head down. Yeah. So you could. Grimaced. You can there's like different tiers of chalk and it's like in between in between like turns there's like a prompt in the corner saying like chalk your queue. I think that's basically yeah. the same thing, but they've uh, yeah. they've what do you call it? They've built the the nomenclature around it a lot better. Yeah. Charging your queue versus chalking your queue makes more sense. <laughs> Imagine going to a pub where you have to chalk you you have to pay you know, pay twenty P to chalk your queue. Yeah. Oh. Another thing is a game that I've been playing for the last week. It hasn't, I can't say it's been a guilty pleasure. My opinion of this game hasn't changed. I still prefer Pokemon Blue, but I've been playing Pokemon Go for about a week. And when I say I've been playing it, I when I go out for a walk in the evening, let's say, or just when I have a moment of complete boredom, I'll launch the app. It takes me a little while to log in. I'll catch a few Pokemon. I'll scoff at all the new Pokemon because I don't like them. I only like the original two generations, let's say, first two generations. Uh, but in that game, you have an avatar, and I've already mentioned this. So Devon's already yeah. smiling. Yeah. You have an avatar, 
Maybe I can send you the picture of my avatar so you can put it on oh, the yeah. screen. Do you, have an, you have an option that you can choose clothing items for your avatar. And you can make your avatar look resemble you. Or you can make it look like the character that you want to roleplay as, if it is indeed a roleplaying game, if you can classify it as a roleplaying game. But the point is you have this character creation screen and you can, using real money, you can convert real money into in-game money and using in-game money you can buy items and you can buy clothes for your character and accessories. Whenever I'm personally greeted by that thing, and I can give you an example both in Pokemon Go and Counter-Strike, of all, of all things, of all places, whenever I'm given the option to customize my character, I enjoy making a mockery of that char character creation system. So my character in Pokemon Go will start from the bottom and will work up, okay? Firstly, I chose the most funny looking body shape and f face shape and hairstyle. So it's an overweight person, I suppose it resembles me to be fair. An overweight person with uh, longish hair and a round face. This person wears sandals, flip-flops rather, really, really short shorts, a bright red, a bright red, oh, sorry, a bright yellow belt, a completely rectangular cuboid, sorry, cuboidal uh, rucksack, which is like a trunk on, on their back. They've got bright green goggles, like a, like an old-fashioned sleeping hat, you know, one where it's to a point, but it's like flopped to the side with that bright blue with with bright blue with white spots. That was my favourite part, the sleeping hat. Yeah. And the best thing about it, in my opinion, is that the Pokemon that I choose to accompany me in my adventure that everybody sees <laughs> is a Mr. Mime doing a really really silly animation. <laughs> And I'm aware that Mr. Mime is a controversial Pokemon from the generation, from the first generation. Some would say maybe it's the worst design. I like it for the for the trolling, I suppose, because the most of the, uh, the other trainers—that's what they're called—the tra the other trainers that I've come across in Pokemon Go, they seem to choose like good-looking outfits, matching shoes, matching matching tops, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's me. <laughs> with my sleeping hat and my cuboidal brown rucksack suitcase. <laughs> I just, I just like the. It was the com what did it for me? It was the combination of of what looks like someone who's like outgoing and like in all this summery like get up, and then the sleeping hat. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this definitely still going? By the way, let's, let's check. Let's have a look. Well, it's gone to the lock screen. Yeah, we're still going, we're still recording everything. I'm top, just 30 minutes in. Very good. Uh, and um, how are we doing for battery? 35% I'll be plenty. Uh, my second example is Counter-Strike. So in Counter-Strike, you can spend thousands and thousands of pounds, real world money, on the skins and the gloves that your character has, and your character's appearance, and that's how Valve earn their money, that's how they squeeze every penny out of... Uh, out of their players. And when people say Valve is like a really nice organization where they, you know, they give us a good experience and they're good to their devs, they give the devs all these kind of extra features, just remember how much money Valve makes on things like, is it Counter-Strike and Dota? Dota's a Valve game, isn't it? I think so. League of Legends is the other one. The other uh, that's Riot, Riot, is Riot it? Riot Games, yeah. Yeah, Dota 2. Uh, Valve earn an obscene amount of money on these games, so just bear that in mind. Uh, so in Counter-Strike, people like having really nice skins, really flashy skins, the latest ones, the ones that look really cool. Uh, you can also put stickers on your skins, so an important part of this game, I think I maybe have talked about it before, is for example if you have a favourite professional player, uh, you can get the sticker with the signature of that professional player and you can put it on your gun, it's almost like that professional player signed your gun, right? Well I went to the, I had some, I, I think I sold a a, a case that I just got by playing, I sold it, I think for £1.50 or something, not particularly a huge amount of money, and I thought I would use that money that I'd earn on the gamble, I would earn through gambling, some poor sod's going to buy that case and pay to open it. Uh, I spent, I thought I'd spend that on stickers that I could put on my gun, so I chose the cheapest, ugliest sticker, which happened to be, it's a sticker called the Ancient Marauder sticker. And it's of some kind of Aztec pirate, let's call him. I don't know how else to describe it. Pulling a horrible face 
and I've just taken that and I've stuck it all over the I've bought like 20 of those stickers and I've put them all over the basic guns you know the, you know, the standard guns that you get in the game without skins you can it's, put a sticker. It's, like, it's like you're rebelling against the system when you do this isn't it <laughs> it's like you want me to care about this well I'm going to choose the worst <laughs> yeah so when I come when I play a game and you have you have to spectate your teammates and your teammates have all these fancy skins and I just know that when they're spectating me they have to see that horrible, stupid face Every time I pull out a gun and do something in the game, yeah, I suppose I am rebelling against the system in my own yeah. little, in my own little way. Yeah, truly rebelling would be not to play the game, I suppose. Yeah. No, but you want to play the game, so it's like. But I do the same thing even in single player games, like yeah. Oblivion. When I played Oblivion, I made a ridiculously looking character. But I suppose everyone yeah. does. So you say you have mixed feelings about like collectibles and stuff. So what's the other side? The other side is that was like the negative. I would say. I don't yeah. quite understand it. I don't like it. Ultimately, I just think, well, these things, uh, Steam may close as a store, and then what happens to all your digital goods that you hoarded? Even your games, I mean, that's another question altogether, but like your, yeah. your, your skins, well, they just go to waste, right? You can't use them anymore. Yeah. It's like um, a different example of this. I played FIFA 13. I went out when I was living out in Russia. That was my comfort food, let's say, but comfort digital game. I played that game, and I even played the Ultimate Team thing. So Ultimate Team, if you don't know what it is, is you collect cards, and those cards represent players, and yeah. then you can put those players onto the field, and you play with those players. That's the microtransaction side of it. Yeah, exactly. So they, they, they con you into paying full price for the game when they try to fleece you with those microtransactions, my, yeah. microtransactions anyway. But... Uh, on that game, again, I did my trolling thing. I just chose a team of Poles and Koreans, which were the cheapest cards, but I just chose the absolute fastest players that you can get, and that was my way of trolling. Yeah. And it was really difficult to play against me, because I had really fast players. Anyway, I wanted to go back, I think it's two years ago now, I wanted to, I installed FIFA 13, because I had it on, P I had the PC version, you can still download the PC version, and I wanted to see all those cards that I had servers are down, you can't log in, you can't see what you had, it's all gone. Unless you record a video of you playing that game, back yeah. then, there's no chance of going back to see what you had. So that's that's kind of my, my warning, my, le my lesson from that. So yeah. just, uh, collecting, those off, uh, collecting those online things, well you may as well just take a picture of what you had as uh, of, of this thing, if you like a particular yeah. scene in the game, you don't have to buy it to put it on a stick, put a sticker on your gun or whatever. Just take a picture of it if you like it. Yeah, well, it's just a show, isn't it? It's just yeah. it's a status thing. But now, offline collectibles, I understand a bit more. Uh, it's not particularly for me. No. To have a big games collection and have loads of discs. No. Despite what I've just said, in terms of Steam shutting down, you lose all your games. I mean, if you have the disc, it's better. I had a fairly, I wouldn't say a substantial, nothing compared to what people have and show off on the online, but. I had quite a few PS2 games, I had quite a few PS3 games, but they just got lost, I lent them to people, I didn't really care too much about storing them and having them on a display case, but I completely understand if somebody does. One standout game to me, I think I've spoken about it before, is The Third Birthday. You which, mentioned it before. Which is Parasite Eve 3, kind of. Parasite Eve yeah. is a series on PS1. It PSP? Uh, it's a PSP game. Yeah. And I bought the collector's edition of that because it was the only one CEX had and it was really cheap anyway so I thought alright when, yeah. when you open up the bookcase uh, the booklet sorry uh, it's just just like pictures of from the game you get, you've also got some postcards which is pretty cool uh, I looked at those I thought that's neat but then I put them back and I actually just played the game mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where that box is now to be honest it's quite tatty uh, yeah, but that's it's something that I, I don't know. I can't say I care too much about. It didn't mean so much to me. No. So, uh, I think of this in terms of I think of this in two two sides. So when it comes to like, so chronologically, I'll start with the uh, the first one. So um, you've got like figurines, for mm. example. So I. Uh, I had a friend in school, and she had some figurines. It was like it was like Buffy or something. 
Okay. And I saw I saw them and she had them in the in like a box and I said I said to her, I was like, Oh, how come you got them in the box? And she said, Oh, it's to like keep the value. Uh-huh. Right? And I was like, Oh right, okay. Like that makes sense. And then I so it, it's so weird for me saying this now because I don't relate to it at all. So I once went to it was like a like a like a game shop and I bought like a little figurine of it was the hero from Dragon Quest Eight. And I just thought, like, oh, I love Dragon Quest Eight. I'll get this, uh-huh. right? And then later on, I think I got like a one for Squall, and I was thinking, I was thinking back to my friend, I was thinking, like, oh yeah. Uh, so if I um, if I keep this in the in the box, but it's going to keep its value and everything. And I look back at that now, and I just think, what's the point? Like, why did I bother? Why well, sell it? Yeah, but it just. Because it's like I'm look, I look back at that now, and I'm thinking to myself, like in my mind, if I try to relate to myself at that time, it's like, well, I like Dragon Quest Eight, I like Final Fantasy Eight. This is a part of what I like. This, oh. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. But when I think about, like, am I going to enjoy having a little plastic thing in a box, or even not in a box? And I think about it, the answer is no. So it's really, like, I don't know, I can't, I can't My question for you is, is your bedroom, is your living room, is your kitchen decorated in your style? Do you go out of your way to decorate your living room, your, your kitchen? Your I bedroom? would. Just mm-hmm. like, yes or no? Yeah. Oh, sorry, my oh. phone has just vibrated. Uh, that is a message I received. I am going to click on do not disturb, so hopefully I won't do that again. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah, so, is your, yes or no? Simple question. Do you decorate, actively decorate, your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, no. in a certain style? No. I'm no. exactly the same. I do not care yeah. whether or not I have a poster on my wall, or whether I have some kind of sort of decoration. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more inclined to like change my wallpaper on my computer, sc- on my computer yeah. screen than I am to change the wallpaper in my bedroom. So that could be a question of personality. Some people like yeah. the figurines to decorate, to accent the room. If they want a Final Fantasy VIII themed room, well, they, yeah. could, they could get those strange uh, green and red tiles to put on the floor just to emulate school's dormitory. It's... See, and the thing, the thing is as well, it's this whole thing of trying to, like, theme something, like, theme a room with something like, oh, I like, I like this particular thing, so whatever game that might be at the time. Yeah. Like, so, like, oh, I could decorate it to make it look like that thing. But... I'm always liking more than one thing at any given time, so I don't, I don't know. It just feels like, well, I can't do everything. So I'm it's like, if I make it look like this thing, I'm going to neglect making it look like this other thing. Well, if you like Pokemon Red and Blue, you can decorate your room blue, but you also like Pokemon Red. Yeah. You want to get Electabuzz? You can't get Electabuzz in blue. Yeah. Electabuzz or Electabuzz? Electabuzz. 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 Yeah. 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 And it's the same, on the other side, is with, like, collector's editions, so I bought the collector's edition of Final Fantasy XIII, and the Final Fantasy X HD, uh-huh. and the Kingdom Hearts uh, 1 remix, 1.5 remix, and it comes with, like, a sample CD, and it comes with, like, an art book, and again, and I, and I look back and I just think, like, that seems so silly, because at the end of the day, I'm never going to use any of them. It was just a case of... This is the thing. This is this thing that I like, so I'm gonna get something. But I, I don't know. It's okay, well, let's, talk, weird. let's talk about soundtracks because okay, we can yeah. just come to the conclusion that decorations. Neither one of us likes to decorate rooms in particular. Yeah. Uh, I think growing up, I always had a Final Fantasy VIII themed wallpaper for my computer. Yeah. Like various uh, like stills from the FMVs. That's what I use as my wallpaper. Yeah. But coming, uh, what about soundtracks? Because soundtracks is something you buy a CD from a game or a vinyl or a tape if you want a tape. You buy one of those and you can have it in your collection, but you can also take it out, put it in a CD player, and listen to it. Or a yeah. Record player. I think I definitely think this is this is a case where it's most notably the case that uh, that like you recognise that times have changed because now. Like I can have, I can have like a soundtrack on my computer and have it like on a hard drive and, and all that, yeah. and that's perfect for me. That's that's just fine. 
but that's more viable now whereas in the past it would be like I could have something on CD and because CDs were more prevalent yeah. it sort of makes more sense to have that central like that central compartment for the music mm. where if I need to rip it again for somewhere else I can do whereas now because like storage space and moving files around is so much easier mm. the actual physical object it doesn't seem as necessary but it could still be a trinket that somebody likes. Somebody well, maybe likes exactly, the ceremony yeah. of taking out a CD, putting it in the player, hearing the whirring of the mechanical parts, and then, you know, the fancy sound system will play the CD at high quality, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, but, take, that, take, but that's not me. Take this for an example. Uh, I I like the game Undertale. I like the soundtrack as well. I think they did a good... All round did a good job with that game. Yeah. Uh, when I bought it... I had the option to buy it and get the soundtrack as well. You pay a bit more, a few more pounds, and you get a soundtrack that you can download. Yeah. And I presume that you download the files onto your computer, and you can, you know, they're MP3s or they're, you know, FLAX or something, and you uh, can play it. Mm. But I'm, I'm guessing it was, using... it was a digital thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess, was it like a... Like a proprietary software. Thing. No, 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 I don't. I don't actually know. I have no idea. No. I didn't actually buy it. But I'm. Oh, right. I'm presuming. Let's say, worst case scenario, it's a proprietary music player that you can only use. Yeah. While you're launching, while you've launched that little thing in your library in Steam. Yeah. Or, let's say, even if you got the raw files. Yeah. Most people have YouTube Music, or Spotify, or Tidal, or whatever else, whatever yeah. other subscription service. I, for example, uh, how use Spotify mostly. Yeah. And so, well, the soundtrack of Undertale is on Spotify. Yeah. So getting the soundtrack on Steam, especially, would just be a way. Would on the one hand be a way of me supporting the developer and the publisher and everything by spending more money on their yeah. thing. But I actually wouldn't be able to use that thing, or I wouldn't use that thing. Because I listen to music most of all on my phone, or on the computer even from Spotify, and I wouldn't be able to enjoy it as much because yeah. I'd have to open a file. If I want to listen to Undertale, I'd specifically have to navigate to that folder in my Steam downloads or something to yeah. find those files and play them in probably Groove Music or whatever ridiculous media players on Windows these days, or right-click open VLC, open in VLC. Yeah, I use Winamp. Winamp is cool. Yeah. I should install that. Winamp is really cool. They came yeah. back, didn't they? I don't know. I then there's like a there's a there's a new it's got a different name, but it's from the same it's like I know. have I have iTunes just to organise files. I don't listen to anything through iTunes. Uh -huh. And then I listen to Winamp. Mean, what do you mean by organising files? Like to adding the rec the artist name and Yeah, stuff, yeah, okay. because you can have it like automatically like, oh, sort, sort okay. the, like, so that the, the metadata, like, it goes in like the appropriate like files and everything, and it's yeah. all like listed. That's cool. So I use iTunes for that, and I use Win. If I want to, if I want to listen to something, I won't go through iTunes. Yeah. So for you, this actually Win would be a good thing. Let's say you want to buy, you want to support them, you want to use the soundtrack, so you would download those FLAC files or MP3 files. Yeah. You'd put it in your iTunes. iTunes would add all the art, the d metadata. Then you'd play it through Winamp. But yeah. yeah, for me, um, I think I'm. I belong to the majority here. That we just, I just use uh, proprietary Spotify me use media player or something. Yeah. So that kind of yeah, this is collectible would be useless for me. This is definitely an instance where I am different. I, I'm sort of like caught behind in that I, st I still use MP3s. To be honest, though, I've been toying with the idea of going back to it. Spotify. I've been having connectivity issues. Yeah. So I live in a town where we have really, really old buildings that are really huge. You know, it's all brick and concrete, so the connection is really bad. If I'm listening to Spotify, if I go into off... Even if I download the files, unless I specifically go into offline mode, and then I have a few days of listening to music in offline mode, uh, if I lose connectivity, it just says Spotify and player can't access the internet get on the internet to listen to Spotify. So I'm yeah. actually toying with the idea of going back to just having MP3s on my phone, but that's yeah. another story altogether. Yeah. Don't want to go down that route just now. Yeah. Posters. Would you ever want one? Final Fantasy Spool with I've hearts around it. 
<laughs> I've had posters. Or squall, you know, uh, you're the best looking guy here. <laughs> I've had posters. When's your, when's your birthday? I want to send you that. <laughs> it's just gone. It's just gone. Oh. Yeah. Christmas then, maybe. Yeah. It was, uh, I've, I've had posters, and the thing is, I started off, I had posters uh, just as a case of having gotten them with things. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'd, uh, like, you know, like, Map of Skyrim and all that. Okay. Just came with the game. But there were a couple that I got. Like one of Sonic and one of Final Fantasy Thirteen, and I, I bought them, and I, and then again, it's a case of I got it, and then it's just just the way I am now. I just think like why? Okay. It's like because I don't. I just I just I just want things to be like plain and simple. All right. As long as I if, as long as if I've got access to like files that I can use, like music I can listen to, games I can play, like if I can like check an online profile or um, you know I've got like a folder of like different like saved images and I've got like, like graphs or screenshots or whatever, as long as, as if I've got that then I am set. But anything physical I've just sort of gained a sort of uh, deterrence for, if that's the right word, what's the word I'm looking for? Aversion to. Aversion, aversion towards, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, what about a bag? Final Fantasy VIII themed bag. You get Squall's little, uh, you get Griever on it. Is that something you'd want? It's, phys it's like a practical thing. You can put stuff in it. Or would you have it, it in is. its original case and on the wall? So, the, the, uh, would so you, uh, that's, yeah. the, that's a ridiculous example, sorry. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you can sometimes get, like, uh, game-related clothing or accessories yeah. that do make sense. You could get, like, sunglasses that... You know, Barrett from Final Fantasy VII War, it's in his style. Yeah. But, uh, you can actually, you know, they're practical items, you can use them. What do you, what do you feel about those? Again, How do you feel about those? again, I mean, it's something, it's the type of thing where I think when I was younger, I would have been like all over it, but now I just think, like, no, yeah. just, just get a normal bag. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. What if, uh, what if you're on, the, what if you're shopping for a bag, and you have a plain black bag? Yeah. Or you have a bag which has, which is stylish. You would, you wouldn't say it's a horrible bag, but it's got like, um, I don't know, one. It's got, let's say, Renault on it. It's stylish. You do like the look of it. But yeah. it is a Final Fantasy VIII themed bag. Would you still go for the plain one, even though the Final Fantasy VIII one is cheaper? You know what, right? This is this is interesting because in my mind, it's like I would go for the plain one, but I'm so happy that other people don't agree with me on this, because like I remember once saying to you, I saw someone with a T-shirt that had like the Balam Garden logo on, oh, yeah. and I was saying like, oh Balam Garden, and he was like, oh, and you know, and she was like really happy to hear it, and we had like a conversation, and everything, and so it's like I'm really I'm really happy that other people do that. But for me, it's just like, no. I don't it's not your style, perhaps. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm a very much. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. If I was. I really don't like clothes. Sorry. Yeah. I really don't like clothes where I'm advertising somebody's brand. Like, if I was supposed yeah. to have a t shirt that had Giorgio Armani on it, let's say. Yeah. Or something else, or Hugo Boss, and a plain shirt. Even if they're the same price, I would always go for the plain one. I don't like that. And I think I'm not as likely. Put it this way: we're going we're to we're, we can migrate to the topic, the thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is, well, the car that I've just bought. Yeah. Uh, but before I introduce the topic of the car, it's personalised license plates. So normally I wouldn't yeah. want a personalised license plate. I don't want to stand out that much. Yeah. I don't want to have, for example, a uh, frantic map just on my license yeah. plate. It's so gaudy. Everyone would just, just think, what a what a tip he's got. Yeah. <laughs> he's got his name on his license plate. Yeah, people do I that. I would prefer a regular one. One that's nondescript. Uh, but at the same time, right now, I have a problem. That this car that I've just bought is a classic car, and I'm going to register as a classic car. And in the country where I live, I think the law is such that I have to have a personalised license plate. Yeah. So what I could do is I could just 
bash my hand on the keyboard and whatever <laughs> sticks is what the license will be. Yeah. But on the other hand, I have a chance to do a live personalized license plate. Yeah. So if I really, really like Renoa, and I do, Renoa is awesome. Renoa for life? Renoa for life. <laughs> I could have Renoa on my license plate. Yeah. Because the, the chances of Renoa being taken are very, very yeah. slim. So, you know, you could see a small black car in Poland yeah. soon with Renoa on the license plate. Yeah. Oh, I just really don't want to. I'd rather yeah. have just a regular one. <laughs> Even if I really like Renoa. I'll have Renoa as my desktop wallpaper. I'll have Renoa yeah. on my phone, but not on the car. I'd See, my, my, the wallpaper, I, my desktop wallpaper that I use, and I've used it for a while now, it's from Streets of Rage. So, like, old Mega Drive game. It's like a pixelated cityscape. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I've shown you. I've it seen before. it. I really like it. Yeah. Especially you've got a, you've got the, uh, you've got it on... Uh, uh, horizontal aspect, a horizontal aspect ratio, or horizontal. I've got no land, sorry, landscape and portrait. You've got a portrait yeah. screen, and landscape screen, and you've got it dragged to both, both across both of them. It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I use, and that one, I had to, I had to actually edit that one because there was like a long version of it, but I, had to, I added a bunch more sky so that it fit like this, square, like sort of like a square. Yeah. Um, but like that. That's interesting because it, in my mind, that's like, it's it's from a game which I like. I mean, I'm not enthusiastic about Streets of Rage. Yeah. When I when I did my ranking, it was maybe 200 something. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like massively enthusiastic about Streets of Rage, but it's just I just like how it looks, and I think most like game themed desktop wallpapers, there's something about it being game themed that might put me off. But I just think like I do because I, I don't know. I want it to be about like, like something for me rather than something that's like generic, that's like out there for other people to just grab. But I think this, I think that one hits the sweet spot. I think it's good. Also, yeah. maybe it's a case of, uh, it's from a game that you really like, but it's not overly loud about it. It's subtle. Yeah. Maybe that subtlety is another important aspect. Yeah. But I mean, it's not even. I mean, it's from a game that I kind of like. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a game I had as a kid, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it's one of the best games by any means. Okay. But it's just. So I what if what if the equivalent thing for me would be let's say a game that I kind of like that it's not I don't know it's not that important to my identity. Uh, okay. I've spoken about this before. I like Oblivion. Oblivion's yeah. quite nice. What if yeah. I just went somewhere in Oblivion and took a screenshot just of the landscape? Yeah. Not of like some particular landmark. Not that there's like the, you know, the White Gold Tower or whatever. Or it's not yeah. like a specific town that people will recognise. But just a completely nondescript area of the map where there are a few trees, some grass. Maybe there's a troll in the background or something. Yeah. I take a screenshot of that and I use it. Somebody who knows Oblivion or who has seen Oblivion before will recognise the art style. Maybe they will say, "Ah, oh, Oblivion, nice." Kind of like with yours, somebody recognises yeah. your game. Yeah. But for the most part, it's not like a gaudy representation of Oblivion. It's not like yeah. me having uh, what's his face, Martin Septon, as the background. <laughs> Handsome though he is. Is that the king at the start? No, that's the king's bastard son. Oh right. So voiced by Sean Bean. Right. Sean Bean, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. I, just, I remember the king. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that game was so wonky. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, introduce this car that I've bought. I understand that not everyone is interested in cars. I like cars. I like old cars. When I was a kid, there are two stories here. One's related to games, one isn't. When I was a kid, uh, every now and again, with my dad, we'd stop off at a, uh, oh, so we just check this still going. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, we're still we're still oh, recording. Very nice. Uh, I just I just you know how I am. I like to check. Um, we would stop off at a Japanese car dealership, and they had all sorts of cars. Most of them sports cars that had been imported specially from Japan, and there were some really fancy ones there, really really expensive ones as well. I always liked a particular one that I don't think was too expensive. It's never been that expensive, and it's not particularly—it's not a—it's not, not, not a particularly attractive car to buy. 
on the grounds that it's not a car that you can drift or go racing in because it's not designed for that purpose. Yeah. It's kind of a sports car. It's kind of like a, a normal car with aspects of that's maybe fairly sporty, maybe it looks sporty, but it's not really. Uh, it's called the Mitsubishi FTO. Yeah. Also popularly known by enthusiasts of Japanese car as the Mitsubishi FT Slow. Yes. Because it's not as fast as other Japanese cars. But my my impression is it's not supposed to be. There's like a ceremony about this a ceremony about this car. About the way it sounds, about about the way it was made, about the country where it's from, the things that it represents that are more important than the sheer performance of how fast you can go. I belong to the let's say the category, I would describe them as that, my brothers would describe it as that, I think my mum would describe it as that. I'm a granny driver. I don't drive particularly fast or aggressively or anything like that. I'm quite happy plodding along. Yeah. But I enjoy having a smile on my face when I'm behind the wheel of a car. Uh, and if I was to choose between a modern car, that one that has no kind of nostalgia for me, one that is really fancy, you know, all the bells and whistles, heated, heated seats, heated steering wheel, blah, blah, blah. Or this old Japanese car, which is kind of Spartan on the inside. You know, the windscreen wipers yeah. don't like wiping the windscreen so much, but we're going to get that fixed. They do yeah. do the job, but they're not great. They, 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 they get to the doing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would choose the old car because there's, it's because of that ceremony, because of what it represents. So it represents that one specific memory of mine of going to see these cars when I was a kid, but it also represents another memory. And this is a memory shared by many people. That Mitsubishi, the Mitsubishi FTO, it represents Gran Turismo. Yeah. Devon knows. Yeah. And especially in the world of Gran Turismo, it's one of the first cars that you drive because it's the cars, it's the, one of the cars that's used for the license tests. I definitely remember them. So, at the beginning when you start playing Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 1, 2, definitely. Three and four as well. The later ones, maybe not so much. But when you start playing the Gran Turismo games from the PS1 and the PS2 eras, you have to do license tests. Or it's really difficult to progress far without the license tests. Yeah. And these license tests are really annoying. Most of them are really boring. No, sorry. Some of them are really boring and some of them are really challenging. Yeah, and just an update for, for the potential audience here. Uh, since since we last did an episode, I have played Gran Turismo 1, and so I now have experience with these license tests. Yeah. And so right at the beginning when you start, they put you in a really, really slow car and tell you to accelerate and then brake. So that would be the very first one then? Yeah, the very first one. And the cu first couple ones, I think. They just get you in a progressively faster car. And I yeah. completely understand them because they want to teach you that a slower car accelerates slowly. Yeah. And if you don't get to a high speed and you brake, you will brake quickly. A faster car may have better brakes, but if you get really, if you get to a really high speed, you have to brake earlier. I get that, but they could have done it in a way that wasn't completely boring. I just, for me, it got to the point where I was like, okay, if I re if if I release the accelerator at the time that that pixel passes the screen, exactly, that's yeah. it. <laughs> but that's what racing is like. So when you yeah. in the real world of racing. You don't get like a magical marker telling you you should brake at this point in order to make the corner. Yeah. You know you have to know your car, you have to know the track, and you have to figure out where the best place to brake is for you. To get the perfect. But it, it could be, but that, that could not. That might not necessarily be for every single lap. Because if you're doing five laps and your brakes get really hot, the yeah. braking distance uh, increases, so you have to brake sooner. You, so you know that on yeah. lap four you have to brake sooner. Anyway, let's not go. And get, let's not get too much into that. But the point is that those license tests were terrible. Terrible, not in the sense that just bad quality, because who knows, maybe people like them. But terrible like Ivan the Terrible, they're notorious. I think if they, if they were just, if they, if they lowered the requirement, I'd be perfectly fine with yeah. them. I, I agree with that. That's yeah. what it was like on Gran Turismo 4. That was my favourite one of the series. And that's something I play to this day. In Gran Turismo 4, it was kind of easy to get the gold. Gold, uh, sorry, the gold medal, the bronze medal for each of the licenses. Getting yeah. gold was a lot more difficult. Yeah. Uh, and 
especially in Grand Turismo 4. But let's start with Grand Turismo 1 and 2. In Grand Turismo 1 and 2, one of my favourite cars was the FTO. It was one of the cheapest cars that you can buy, one of the cheaper cars that you can buy at the beginning. You can upgrade it and it's a lot of fun to drive. It's not too difficult to drive as well because it's front wheel drive, meaning the, the engine powers the front wheels and not the rear wheels. If you have a front wheel drive car, it's less likely to spin. If you have a rear wheel drive car, it's more likely to spin. And that's also true in Gran Turismo. Uh, Gran Turismo 4, however, the most amount of time I've ever spent on getting a license was, I think it's the category A licenses, I can't remember what number it is, but it was taking two corners in the Mitsubishi FTO, and to this day I've never got gold in that. No. I got gold throughout the B licenses, most of the A license, or is it international A licenses? I managed to get gold, I think, in most of the things, but never in that one, and I've spent the most amount of time, I think, in that game, staring at the back of that Mitsubishi FTO. And I think for many people, it's a case that that Mitsubishi FTO represents the frustration that they felt playing that game. Yeah. The, the, all the memories of doing, having to do licenses is sometimes kind of uh, fo focused on that one car. Right, so it's, it's ingrained onto the identity of the car. I think so. I think yeah. if I'm driving around that car, I have two memories. I have one, Gran Turismo. It's kind of like a collectible for me, because yeah. I really like Gran Turismo. The thing that I think first in Gran Turismo is of me buying the FTO and upgrading it and so on. So that's one of the first things that comes to mind. The other thing is the memories with my dad. That's another one. Uh, but I think when other people see me, it will just be, oh, that's a black car. <laughs> it's just a car. Yeah. Four wheels and it goes. It's not a mo It's not a motorcycle. It's not a lorry. It's a car. Yeah, with, with a weird license plate. With a weird license plate that's got an orange and bats on it. Yeah. Uh, that's what my mum said. She said, why has it got an orange yeah. <laughs> on the license plate? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that will change, of course, when I, when I export the car. But uh, another thing is that they'll look at that car and they'll just think, oh, God, that's that car from Gran Turismo. That's the one that... <laughs> that's that's the, all those license tests. And the memories of yeah. all those licenses will go back to some of the, some of the people that will see my car on their daily, on their daily uh, journey. Yeah. So that's what it could mean. That's what it could represent. So you're going to send people mad. Possibly. Yeah. Or they're going to have similar memories to me, that they like the car in Grunge. Yeah. Who knows? So that's that. Yeah. So I have yeah. gone most of my life thinking collectibles are kind of, eh. I don't like digital collectibles. Physical collectibles have happened upon them from time to time. But now I've kind of gone off the deep end and I've got a car that's kind of a collectible, let's say. Yeah. I think I think the distinction there is that it's not like it, it's not that the car was made to reference the yeah. game. If you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah of course. That's uh, it's a it's a it's a link that I've attached yeah. to the car myself. Yeah. But it's a link that I do think other people will also attach to that car. Yeah. The culture of uh, buying cars from Japan is usually linked to video games or films. So Fast, the Fast and the Furious, that was a film that was popular. And on the on the back of the Fast and the Furious, Need for Speed Underground, and those Need for Speeds, the Need for Speeds that came after it, but I think especially Underground and Underground 2, yeah. those were games that really uh, kind of piggybacked off the popu popularity of the Fast and the Furious. And they really popularized Japanese cars and modifying cars especially. So these are like cars with gaudy ironing boards on the back. Oh, yeah. Spoilers there, yeah. yeah. Big wings. Yeah. That's not something I want to do. <laughs> but uh, I think for a lot of people, Japanese cars from the 90s, which is well, the FTO is an example of that, they are uh, kind of in the cultural memory in video games or as being these fast racing cars, let's say, that you tune up and that are having you know, thousands of horsepower, let's say, or 1,000 horsepower. Uh, whereas the car that I've chosen is kind of on like the wonky end of, of that spectrum let's say yeah it's not a fast one it's not one that was in Need for Speed I don't think even I don't think it was in the Fast and the Furious ah oh yes. I just remembered my car apparently the one that I've just bought 
was somehow recorded and scanned for a video game called Juice 2. Have you heard of Juice 2? I'm familiar with it. Have you played it? I've not played it. Okay. Juice 2 is a car racing game, kind of like Need for Speed Underground. It's like all, yeah. it's all about the flashing, all about the, the flashy cars and driving fast and so on, customizing your car. Uh, I think the gameplay isn't that good, to be honest. Right. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, my car was scanned and recorded for that game. Was it Xbox? Juice Xbox 360 PS3. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. I wasn't sure if it was like Xbox 360 or like PS2. Juiced 1, I think, was Xbox original and right. PS, PS2 era. Right. And then Juiced 2 was next generation. Right. Then next generation. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's another little tip, I, I suppose. I only know them by name. Oh, they are the Juice yeah. ones. So, when you first mentioned collectibles, the very first thing I was thinking of, I was imagining, was like, uh, like platform games or like just like things scattered around, like you walk along and you pick things up. Around. Ah, that, was, okay. that, was, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Do you want to talk about that? Because I've got something to say about that. Uh, you could, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Okay. What I have to say is, I don't like it. Yeah when it's really, really, really annoying. <laughs> I think you could say that about everything. <laughs> okay, do, do you I mean, get you, but like, yeah. okay, I'll give you a clear example. And anyone who has played any Grand Theft Auto game, from Grand Theft Auto 3 to the latest yeah. ones, there are collectible things that you can do in the world. But yeah. these usually revolve around going to some completely unnecessary part of the map and collecting and walking into like a floating orb. Yeah. So hidden packages or hidden items. Yeah. In Grand Theft Auto 4, it was shooting pigeons in the yeah. city. They would glow orange and you'd have to shoot them. In Grand Theft Auto 3, there were like packages that were hovering somewhere and you had to walk into them. Hate it. Yeah. Pointless. I think it's kind of lazy, to be honest. Yeah. But at the same time, it's maybe it adds value for some people. Some people maybe think it's a good thing. I think it depends. I think a lot of the time, I think if you are talking about like an open world game like GTA and Assassin's Creed and all that, I think yeah. in those cases it's just, it's, it is just, we've made a big world, we need a lot of stuff in it. I think that is... The sensation, the sense that I had from Final Fantasy 15 was that yeah. the world is too big. Did you, did you think that? Maybe Final Fantasy 15 could have done with some hidden packages. To well, the thing was, uh, it, it wasn't so much that the world was too big, it was just that it was pointless. Because if you need to, like say so if someone sends you on a quest, he's like, right, you need to find this thing in this area, and then you, you go in the car and then you, you go to that area, or you teleport there, however, I can't remember exactly how it works. Yeah. But you do something like that, then it's like the world itself becomes pointless because you're just going to appear like whichever is like closest to the goal location and then just like head straight to it. I think yeah. a lot of it is pointless in that regard, but I was thinking like, um, say like a platform, like say, I don't know, like, so you've got like a platform game where you've got like, oh, this level has 200 coins and to enter this level you need, uh, you need mm -hmm. a thousand coins to enter this level. Yeah. So it's just, just collectible just to find. And I think, like, I think that's distinct mm -hmm. in that those games are about the traversal. Yeah. They're about like going from one place to another. Yeah. What if it's like it collect so many coins in such an amount of time? So it's also to do with skill. You have to actually. Yeah, that's that. That's sort of like uh, like optimize, like finding the quickest route and and all that. I think with things like that, it does it does get a bit much when because you you know how much I I like ukulele. Yeah. Because you've seen you've seen me stream it and. Uh, and have gone on about it before. But what that game does is, one of the, like every level has so many quills you can collect. I can't remember the exact number, but say if it's like 300 quills, and there's like things hanging around, uh, they, they stand out because they're like, they bounce. So if you see any in the distance, you can just like, like pick them up. Like, you can like pick up the signs that they're there. But also there's a, something you can unlock in that game where once the amount of like, once X percentage, of the collectibles have gone, then 
then if you're near anything, the game will like like indicate it, like it'll like make a beeping noise or whatever mm -hmm. to say you're near something. But that only kicks in once you've collected so much. Mm -hmm. So say if you collect like. 270 of them then there's 30 you just like around and it's like well where could they possibly be you just it's like i could be anywhere like checking every nook and cranny it like it adds that bit on just to make that like that last bit and i know mario obviously does a similar thing that would be frustrating in my opinion you, you have this huge world so many levels you've collected yeah. 300 uh, 270 items there are 30 left yeah and they could be anywhere you have to go all in the way back to from where you started and just scan everything well, it's, I would find that frustrating to be honest. It's, I mean, that in and of itself is, especially if you don't get any indicator at all. If there's, if there's one and it's somewhere. But with ukulele, the levels tend to be very like wide open, so you can get like a good view oh, of, of okay. the level. And like it's so. so some of you guys come back to come back to uh, come back to me, and that's Call of Duty Four. Yeah. The single player is just like uh, you go here, you shoot people, you go there, you shoot people, you go there, you shoot people, you go there, you press B. Kind of. I'm, yeah. I'm summarising. Yeah. And there's no real going back, there's no real exploring, it's just go here, shoot, go there, shoot, go there, shoot. You can't return from whence you came. Yeah. And there are collectibles, you can collect documents. Yeah, that's, that's very much a thing, that's like a Bioshock Infinite did that. Yeah. It's very much a thing of that, of a particular era. Okay. where their idea of exploration was just have a path but have some things around on the way. Well I think that goes back even further. I think I remember Medal of Honor Underground for PS1 had that kind of thing where right. you can find interesting things. But well, more interesting th for me would be I think maybe Sniper Elite version 2 or V2 whatever it's supposed to be. I think it's V2 because V2 is a rocket. Sniper Elite V2 uh, that one had you get to pick up weapons, I think, because you, you you go into the level with just a weapon, just your normal yeah. normal gun, normal second gun, sidearm, and during some levels you can find a new interesting gun, and you get to use the new interesting gun. That's a kind of hidden package or uh, mm -hmm. collectible within a game that rewards you by offering you something different, offering offering you something interesting, as opposed to just here's a number that's gone up yeah it does i think i do think it depends because i think some some games definitely benefit i think the whole like number thing going up the whole point of number thing going up if it's if it's not some sort of if it's not just oh we've got a big map let's fill it uh, -huh. uh a lot of it can be well we've got we've got we've, we've made a big level we need to have something, like a, like a reward reason to make people go around the level, rather than, it, so, like, like, as the game presents it, the reward is the things you pick up, the number going up, mm -hmm. but the benefit to the game is that it makes you go around and tackle all these different challenges, okay. because there's different obstacles in different places and all sorts. Yeah. Whereas sometimes, if if something, if a hidden item is useful in some way, mm -hmm. then that's uh, well. I suppose you could say it's better in general, but I think it's a different style. So I can give an example of this recently because I've been playing Tomb. Like you know, I'm a fan of Tomb Raider two, right? So uh, this last month or so, I've started playing Tomb Raider four, and I did play that as a kid, but I didn't really remember much of it. So I've started playing it again, and on one of the early levels. Um, I found a secret, so there's like this, this platform, like you've got like a path, like there's this guy you're meant to follow, but there's uh, there's like, like in the middle of the room there's this rope, and you can like swing from the rope and there's like an extra room to the side, and you go there and it does the secret sound to say, oh you found a secret, okay. but if you go further into the, like you travel further into the room, it's got, it's got like this whole mechanism, like this whole trap going on, mm -hmm. so it's, it's its own thing. And so you've got like a spike ball that like goes around the room and you have to like go like around the room but dodging the spike ball thing. And at the end of it you find Uzis. Now usually in a two because uh, I've I played a one and two more than any others. Usually the Uzis you wouldn't get them for like 
quite some time because mm-hmm. you've got the pistols, then you've got like some some other like intermediate level one, and then uses after that. But by going on this path, it, it feels like it was bigger than a normal secret would be. Yeah, and you I got, got re- the, you got rewarded for being curious and exploring. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, I do. Res- I really respect that. Yeah, that's kind of in um, uh, Hitman Contracts is a game that did that to an extent. Knowing the level, knowing where to look for things, exploring the level, yeah. you can find interesting guns in interesting places, even if they're completely pointless for the level. But if you get to the end of the level with the gun that you were holding, yeah. that ends up in your hideout. And after you've completed the level, if you want to go back to it, you can start that level with the gun that you you uh, snuck out at the end of it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Speaking of, I know this is slightly off topic, but you were saying like you, you you really respect it when a game has like rewards you for exploring and being curious. Another example of that, which I've probably told you about before, is Crash Bandicoot 2. Okay. So, and this is something that I really respect Crash Bandicoot 2 for, is that the, in that game, there's certain areas that just look a bit odd, a bit suspicious. So there's one level early on where there's a platform and there's nothing on the platform at all mm-hmm. and so what you meant to do is you meant to step on like this speedboat oh I don't know what you would call it it's like it's like a surfboard with a, an engine on it okay. so you like you, you step on that and you meant to like whiz through but there's a platform there and there's a couple of boxes like in the water and I remember as a kid thinking to myself like I can jump on that platform mm-hmm. nothing there I didn't think I was going to get anything but I just thought like wouldn't it be cool if I could step on that platform because I'm not meant to Okay. So you jump on the boxes, and then when you get there, it teleports you to a secret level. Amazing. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's like, oh, but like, I didn't think it was a secret, I just thought, like, I, I bet I can land on that platform. Yeah. You're getting cold. Uh, I'm, you've, got, you've got a... I've got a cold no, I'm in a jumper. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's breezy. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I, think, I think I have to finish soon. Yeah, I think, I think I've said everything. Yeah. Like you say? Collectibles. Yeah. Hopefully this episode turns out alright. We've got the wind. Well, we've got this fluffy thing. Let's have a look. Got the fluffy thing on the, on the thing. I think it's fine. Yeah. I mean, that seems... That is fine. I mean, even if it is a little bit... A little bit fuzzy, then whatever. We can still use it. It's fine. <sighs> Thank you. It's alright. It's been good. I was about to talk about what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. I've had my new car for two days. Yeah. Old car, old banner, <laughs> as Devin so said. you got, well, that, that that was my question to you, like, is it an old banger? I don't think so. So, you, you, you got a car and you were thinking, like, oh, how can I spin this into, into a topic? No, actually, no. When oh. I suggested the topic, I was considering it. And I was really, for a long period ah. of time, I was trying to think of arguments for and arguments against. And an argument for and argument against getting this car was that, on the one hand, it's kind of like a collector. Well, that's pretty cool. But on the other hand, it's a collector. Well, why, I'm not somebody who likes collecting things. Yeah. But yeah. That's where that's where the thought came from. And then I decided yeah. to get it, and yeah. that's where similar, we are today. Sort of similar to when I say, like, well, I got this Dragon Quest Eight figurine because I'm the sort of person I like Dragon Quest Eight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we finish. Right. Yes, okay. Cheerio. Have a good day, wherever you are. Wherever I am in the world, who could possibly know? Stop. <laughs>